Alright guys, so today we are starting the day six video and we're going to be talking about how to name binary molecular compounds. Now, unlike previous videos, up until now we have only been talking about ionic compounds. We talked about ionic compounds including just regular uh, cations and anions that did not have anything special about them. We went into the stock system where we used Roman numerals and then finally we talked about polyatomic ions and how they combine with other ions to form ionic compounds. Today we're going to talk about molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are compounds which use um, which use covalent bonding. Okay. Now there is a stock system of naming them where we do use uh, Roman numerals, but we're not going to be talking about that today. So today we are just going to be talking about the old fashioned way of naming covalent compounds or molecular compounds. And this is actually very simple. The first thing you need to understand is we need to use prefixes. A prefix is basically uh, something that comes before a word that indicates to you what that word might mean. Okay, so let's talk about the prefixes. Mono means one, di means two, tri three, tetra four, penta five, hexa six, hepta seven, octa eight, nona nine, and deca ten. Okay, we're going to use these prefixes in order to indicate how many of each atom we have. So if I look at here, carbon monoxide. This tells me that I have one oxygen, okay? And then if I had carbon dioxide, that would be CO2 because I would have two oxygens. Now, a quick rule that you guys should know, if the first atom in your compound, you only have one of them, you don't have to indicate mono. This is why it's not monocarbon monoxide. If the first atom, there's only one of them, you don't have to write mono because it's at the very beginning. We don't always have to indicate one, but the second one, we will usually use mono. So here we go, silicon dioxide, not monosilicone dioxide, okay? But if you go down here, like, uh, here, I4O9. This is tetraiodine known oxide. Tetraiodine because the first one in the entire thing in your compound does have more than one of them. This is when you have to indicate. So if you have more than one of your first thing, you have to actually indicate how many of them you have. But if your first uh, atom only has one, you don't have to indicate that, but you always have to indicate the second and the third and the fourth, whichever ones come next. So let's go back here. So when I am naming my polyatomic, uh, sorry, my molecular compound, which has covalent bonds, the first thing I need to do is give the name of the element and its prefix. Remember, if I only have one, I don't have to give a prefix. So here I have four phosphate phosphoruses. So I'm going to call that tetraphosphorus, okay? Because of this rule right here. Tetra means four. So it's tetraphosphorus. And then my next one is oxygen. I can see here that there are 10 oxygens. So if I go here, I'm going to find the number for 10. It's deca. So I know it's deca oxide or deca oxide, right? And then the final thing that you guys need to remember is the oxygen is not going to go deck oxygen. What's going to happen is we're going to re erase the end of the word and add the word "-ide instead. Just like what we've been doing at the very beginning of this lesson. Remember, we're not talking about the polyatomic ions now that we were talking about yesterday. We're talking about what we've been doing before that. So, remember, indicate the number of atoms of your first one. If you only have one, you don't have to indicate anything, but since we have four, we have to go tetraphosphorus. Mm -hmm. And then in your second one, you also have to indicate how many there are. If there's one or more than one, you have to go monoditri, whichever one you have. And then the final thing that you need to remember is the end of the second element, its name gets replaced with ide, okay? 
So this is tetraphosphorus decoxide, okay? And another thing you guys need to remember here is you see how this is deca, nona, octa? If your second element starts with a, uh, starts with a vowel, you just get rid of the A and you just continue into the words. So instead of saying it's deca oxide, it's just decoxide. We got rid of the A and just continued on with our lives. Okay? All right, so you guys can just go over this a little bit. So you can see here that this is dinitrogen monoxide or monoxide. Okay? This is nitrogen monoxide. Remember how we didn't put the mono at the beginning here? This is because it's at the very beginning, so we don't need to indicate that there's only one of them. And this is also not mono nitrogen dioxide. This is just nitrogen dioxide. Okay? But this one, we have to indicate that there's two nitrogens. This is why it's dinitrogen trioxide. If you go here, you'll see that three means tri and di means two. And then here, dinitrogen tetraoxide. So if you go back, you'll see tetra means four. So two nitrogens, four oxygens, dinitrogen tetraoxide. Then here, you have two nitrogens and five oxygens, so it's going to end up being dinitrogen, and if you don't know what five is, you can go here for penta, penta oxide. Do you get the idea? It's basically the same thing, just repeating over and over and over again. Find the correct prefix and give the right name, and remember to change the very end of your name and give it ide instead. So if you go here, this is arsenic and oxygen. I want to name this compound. So the first thing I need to do is I need to see how many arsenics I have. I have two arsenics, so two arsenics means di. So I know that the beginning of my name is di arsenic. And then I'm going to look here at this five. I know that five means penta, which means I'm going to go pentoxide, not pentaoxide. I'm going to get rid of this A because oxide or oxygen starts with an O. Remember, if the name starts with, an, starts with a vowel, you just go ahead and erase this A and continue on as normal. So my name is going to be diarsenic pentoxide, okay? All right, so now let's try this one. Oxygen difluoride. In this one, what you need to do is give me the formula. You can see here that there is no prefix to oxygen, which tells you that there is only one oxygen in this compound. So I know that the beginning of it is just going to be O, just an O by itself. And then how many fluorides do I have? How many fluorines? I have two because di means two. So now I know that I have one oxygen because there's no mono, there's no nothing in front of the oxygen, and I know that I have two fluorines, so my overall compound is OF2, okay? So if anyone ever gave you a compound like this, and they just gave you the name, dinitrogen monoxide, I know that I have two nitrogens and one oxide. Or if you go here, dinitrogen tetraoxide or tetraoxide, because remember, we got to get rid of the A because it starts with an O. I know that I have two nitrogens and four oxygens, okay? So this is very simple stuff. If you guys need extra help, you can rewatch the video. And if you really need extra help, you can go ahead and message me on Shobi. All right, so good luck.